Well, first of all, I hope uh, practice goes s smoother than uh, the entry here. So uh, just good afternoon, everybody. And it's, it's certainly good to be uh, talking football uh, after all this. There's been uh, uncertainty, certainly for everybody, going back to, uh, to March in all regards of our lives, certainly. So uh, it was really great to get some clarity in terms of where we're going as a football conference and, uh, you know, what it looks like moving forward. And uh, I can just tell you, uh, it was really exciting for our players to get that news yesterday, uh, to see their faces, uh, announce it to the various groups in the morning. And uh, we had a team meeting last night, but just a total different demeanor and tone. So, you know, to me, the biggest issue in this whole time has been uh, about our players, you know, what's best for them. And uh, certainly their health is first and foremost, but uh, for them to, to know that we have a chance to play football, it's exciting. Uh, Dave Restman on the Big Ten Network yesterday said, you know, I'm sure you're raring and uh, ready to go. And I said, yeah, certainly we're raring to go, but we're hardly ready to go. And that's that's really the challenge that's in front of us right now. So um, first thing I would just uh, want to do is just uh, thank all the uh, presidents and chancellors, all the people that uh, were involved in the decision for uh, their leadership and their thoughtful consideration in this matter. And uh I know back in August, they had information in front of them and they didn't feel comfortable for uh, several reasons. So they, they made the decision they made and uh, uh, really appreciative that they uh, looked at the information, the new information that's uh, been brought forward and, and the uh, clarity that was brought to some other issues and uh, found a way to uh, have us have a path to football. So we're excited about that. But, but all that being said, uh, you know, there's still, still a lot of work to be done. I think uh, the rapid testing uh, not that I'm a medical expert, that that was a real uh, game changer. And there were some real concerns about contact tracing, especially. So I think that was a, a prominent part in this whole thing. But, you know, this, this isn't going to go away. It's going to continue to be something that everybody's got to be very, very vigilant about. Uh, everybody's going to take per personal responsibility because we'll certainly be dealing with this uh, at least until January and uh, most likely beyond that. So that, that's uh, first and foremost, but again, appreciate uh, the leadership of the conference uh, you know, finding a path to the field. Uh, our first priority has always been the health and safety of our players. And, you know, obviously preventing injuries comes under that category. But uh, in regards to the COVID part of things, the part of the equation, uh, again, I think, you know, it's been interesting from my perspective uh, to watch what's going on since our players got back. Uh, we had some issues at the front end back in June. Uh, when really nobody, I, I don't think, appreciated the, the total uh, seriousness of this whole thing. So that was one period where we had uh, had some testing come come back. Thought our guys did a great job during the course of the summer and really settled in, and uh, we got into a pretty good routine. And then certainly uh, when uh, students came back to the campus, uh, not only the addition of the student body being here, but I think also the fact that we weren't planned factored into it. And I think we dropped our guard a little bit, but uh, happy to say things have leveled off since that time as well. Um, so that that's uh, certainly, you know, certainly something to be optimistic about. Um, and then the other thing I just want to comment on, take a minute just to, to compliment everybody. The, the players, I think, have done a good job, uh, their awareness. And, and really, I just, uh, you know, want to pass off my uh, uh, thanks and appreciation on behalf of our entire staff. Uh, our medical staff has just worked tirelessly. You know, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, how many hours they put in and the things they've been asked to do. Same thing with the support staff and our strength conditioning staff. They've had immense challenges uh, going back to June when the players came back. So uh, they've been working really literally around the clock to make things work and make things uh, uh, doable uh, in, in uh, the face of some of these challenges. So I just want to thank them. And, and as we move forward, one of the key points I shared with our players uh, twice yesterday was just, again, the level of personal, personal responsibility all of us have and, uh, you know, if, if we're going to make this thing a reality, if we're going to make this thing move forward, uh, everybody's got to probably be more vigilant than they've ever been uh, as we go along. So I think that's uh, certainly certainly really important. Uh, one other factor, again, for the coaches and all of us to be cognizant of, I think, is uh, just, you know, where we're at physically right now. And certainly there is a reason uh, teams go to, to uh, come off May break and come back and train the month of June and month of July before they go to uh, camp in August. And uh, there's a real reason for that. So, you know, we haven't had that that type of uh, continuity with our training for a couple different reasons. And, uh, you know, the reality is uh, when we had our helmets on for the first time back in July, the end of July, you know, it's, it seemed strange to see our guys with helmets. It was the first time we'd seen them uh, since uh, December 
haven't pulled the helmet on. And now it's going to be the same thing whenever we do get our shoulder pads on. We haven't had pads on since uh, December 27th as well. So, you know, we certainly have some challenges from a football standpoint, a lot to do in a short amount of time. We're really going to have to maximize uh, every opportunity. And, you know, at one point looked at it as a possibility we could play in January. Had one different mindset for that possibility of playing after Thanksgiving. Didn't really impact things. And then all of a sudden the discussion of October uh, changed things dramatically. So, uh, the bottom line is that the time that we have between now and our first ball game is uh, still undetermined, but we have a good idea what that window looks like, uh, roughly a five-week window. So we really have to try to be as smart and vigilant as we can to to move forward and have a good plan in place for our players. Uh, but first and, for, and foremost, I think we have to take in consideration where they're at physically. Uh, one statistic, uh, talking to one of the NFL strength coaches during the course of the summer, he threw out the amount of soft tissue issues they had back in 2011. Uh, you know, after that, uh, the pause there with their training, the training the, the players didn't get. So that's a very real issue, just like COVID is a very real issue. So we've got a couple levels, I think, of, of awareness we have to have from a physical standpoint with our players. And, um, you know, they're both very, very important in terms of, uh, you know, player safety and player well being. So that, that's kind of where it's at uh, in that regard. Uh, I know the scheduling is yet to be determined. What we do know is we'll play eight games, and uh, they'll all be Big Ten games, so they're all going to be extremely competitive. Uh, really not too worried about who the opponents are. Uh, I've got an idea who six of them are for sure. So, you know, we'll worry about that at a later time. Right now, our, our focus is really just on getting our team ready and doing what we can uh, to, to do, you know, do our best to have them ready to go on, on the 23rd, 24th, whatever that day may be. And then just in closing, before I open up for questions, just uh, – on behalf of our staff, I want to offer up our uh, condolences to Scott Frost and his entire family. Uh, Scott lost his dad here and, uh, you know, went through that myself. So it's a, it's a really a tough thing for anybody that's experienced that, certainly. And our, our condolences, our thoughts are with uh, Scott and his entire family. And I'll go ahead and open that up for, uh, for questions. Thanks, Coach. We'll start with Adam Rittenberg. Hey, Kirk. Thanks for taking the time. I was just wondering what the uh, what the weekend was like for you as the the presidents were meeting the subcommittee and, and the others on that return to competition task force and and just kind of waiting until uh, until you got an answer. Uh, I guess it was yesterday. What what was that period like for you and your staff? Yeah, you know, I, I can't describe it as overly dramatic. Uh, I tried to make myself as numb as I could to it, uh, and have kind of developed a habit of that. I guess over the last several weeks. Uh, regarding that decision. And then, you know, strangest weekend too, watching football. Uh, we have that opportunity during bye weeks, uh, but not, not to the extent we did this past weekend. So, um, you know, quite frankly, it was kind of hard to stay interested in any of the games. It's just really different when you're not involved. And, um, you know, so obviously I think, you know, I think I'm stating the obvious, every coach I'm sure in the conference was hoping things would work out where we could find uh, a pathway back to the field sooner than later, but, uh, you know, to, to handicap it or, or to think any of us had inside knowledge on it, I don't think I missed it. And, you know, bottom line is you live with the results, you hope for the best, but you live with the results and try to do the best you can with whatever, whatever cards you get dealt. Did you, did you think there were several areas that had to be resolved for you guys to have a chance this fall, whether it was rapid testing or the hard issues or just a couple of things that you felt or, or watched had to be figured out for you guys to have this chance? Well, you know, I, I have, uh, I kind of majored in English and history, uh, you know, uh, uh, my science background is pretty limited, but, you know, it dawned on me, uh, dawned on me back in whenever March, uh, I guess more and more like April and May, uh, at some point, be it football or basketball, you know, at some point bodies are going to be close to each other in close proximity, whether you're playing defense and basketball or, you know, playing football. I mean, it's, it's tough to play the game without people, being in close proximity. So I kind of assumed that was going to be an issue. And during those times, the early stages of this whole thing, uh, you kept hearing about social distancing and all those kinds of things. So uh, without knowing the science behind it, uh, certainly that was going to present some challenges. And the more you learned about it, you know, to me, that was, that's really been one of the biggest challenges of this whole thing is the contact tracing uh, policies that are in place uh, by the government. So uh, to find a way to, to better deal with those issues uh, certainly uh, rapid testing is a major breakthrough and, uh, you know, it's great to see apparently the NFL, they're doing a great job with it. So it's great to see examples where, you know, it can be done. And, uh, you know, I think with the testing, 
uh, to me being one of the major issues, you know, the testing and then personal responsibility. Hopefully we'll have a chance to move forward here in a, in a positive way. But all that being said, you're just never out of the woods with this. I think that's one thing we've all learned in six months. David Eichel. Hey, Coach, really appreciate you doing this. Um, just as of today, do you anticipate any of your players uh, electing to opt out of the upcoming season? We have a very small number that uh, have concerns, have expressed concerns, but uh, no final announcements at this point. Uh, if we do get verification or final announcements, we'll, we'll announce that when it's appropriate. But, uh, you know, it, it hasn't been overly uh, concerning. Uh, I think back a couple of months ago, that was on a lot of people's minds. But, uh, you know, uh, in a general general way, I would just say our players, I think, are really excited about this opportunity and they're excited to play. Chad Leistakow. Hey there, Coach. My computer uh, or my internet is terrible at home, so I'm sorry. Um, can can uh, we're, we're living that world right can you now? Give me some, <laughs> yeah. Can you well, offer well, some perspective on how many uh, like full contact practices you would have in spring and training camp versus maybe what you anticipate a good ballpark number being ahead of your October 24th opener? Yeah, you know, I haven't done the math totally. Um, you know, the, the magic number right now is at least the magic date is uh, uh, the 30th, as I understand it. So, you know, I just hope those uh, tests get here on time. Uh, and I hope, uh, you know, that really helps to open the door a little bit. That, that's when we'll actually be able to, um, you know, practice with shoulder pads on. And, uh, you know, you've heard me say it before, you can't play this game sitting in a chair. I and mean, there's a lot to be get benefited from meetings. Uh, and going out and, and working in shells, absolutely. You know, we get a lot of work done with the uh, uh, the soft, you know, spider pads on, I guess they, they're using that term. But you get a lot of work done, but it's, it's still not the same. And, and part of it's a physical part. You know, the body has to learn how to uh, uh, play, you know, indoor contact and deliver contact in a safe way. And, you know, if you don't do enough of that, that's going to lead to some issues, uh, you know, different issues than the soft tissue issues. So there are a lot of things that go into it. Um, hopefully, you know, we'll have enough, uh, enough time to get ready, game ready. Um, to, to answer the question about spring ball, we, you know, we typically wear pads uh, 11. We're permitted to do it uh, 12 days. We usually wear them 11 or 12 days, uh, sometimes not all 12 uh, as a rule. And then, you know, in camp, we try to be smart, uh, typically in August. So, and the way we do it now is much different than it was in 1999, certainly. But, you know, you do what's best for your team and uh, with the mind of trying to get them ready to play. Um, but it, it's going to be a challenge. It's a unique challenge. We knew that everything this year has been, uh, but, but the other, other part of the equation is everybody's working under the same guidelines. So, you know, what, what challenge we have 13 other schools have the same one. Appreciate it. Thanks. Mark Morehouse. Coach, uh, you guys have had some team stuff since, uh, COVID and quarantining has been in, in play. What is trying to run a practice like when you have X amount and, you know, looking forward to the six weeks you guys have before you kick off the season, what, how, how prepared, you know, an Iowa team is usually drilled and skilled you guys run the inside zone 4,000 times in camp um, how drilled and skilled can this Iowa team be that way because you know it's time crunch and a lot of what you guys do is very physical and uh, that's obviously you know uh, there's an eye on that too yep. so uh, I mentioned earlier you know it dawned on me months ago that at some point bodies were going to be uh, you know uh, in close proximity it also dawned on me this this whole thing may favor teams with great genetics or uh, experienced quarterbacks. We don't we don't necessarily have either, and really smart coaches. So we're over three, but um, you know all that being said, everybody's got the same challenges. So uh, it's just a matter of you know we, we have to try to find a. Uh, what I've talked to the players about is if we are meeting, if we are training, if we are practicing, yeah, you know, we we don't have a wiggle room. We don't have uh, any any room for an average day or a bad day. You know, we got to make every every play count, every snap count knowing that, you know, it won't be the volume that we're, we're typically used to. Uh, and as I said a few minutes ago, too, that, you know, every, every team's facing the same challenges. So, 
you know, some people may have a little bit of an edge, but that, that's life in general. And it's just a matter of trying to uh, maximize what it is you can do. And, uh, you know, as a schedule reads right now, and if we can just stay on course, that's, that's probably the biggest challenge. Uh, you know, we'll find a way to be ready. You know, it may not be perfect, but we'll find a way to be ready and hopefully be a really uh, competitive and a good football team at some point, hopefully sooner than later. One quick follow. Um, you, uh, after August 11th, you mentioned there was a bit of a letdown, you know, not knowing when a season was going to be. As a coach, you know, you guys are used to having the answers, used to having final say. And uh, you've joked in the past about not the bit when, when big decisions are made, coaches are sometimes last to know. What was that feeling like this time around when uh, you really, you didn't have any, any definitive uh, season to throw out in front of your team? Yeah, this whole experience has been very uh, real. You know, it's in some ways like a science fiction movie. And I'll go back to, you know, just showing the footage of uh, Times Square with nobody in it, uh, which was pretty prominently shown on, on uh, the news stations early during the pandemic. So, um, you know, we, we've dealt with issues. Uh, it's been weird. Uh, it's, it's always weird not having targets, timelines, uh, routine. We're all creatures of routine. But, you know, when you compare it to some of the things that have happened, um, you know, across the country and uh, in our state, uh, you know, we're, we're all pretty fortunate. So we're all healthy. Uh, I'm not young, but a lot of the people in this building are young. So you know, there's a lot of opportunity out there in front and a lot of, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to try to make the best of this as we can. And I'm just uh, really appreciative of the fact that we have a chance now to uh, compete in October. I think that's great. And uh, we're going to do our best to uh, handle this as well as we can over the next five weeks and, and then go from there. But, you know, it's been, been really, I'm sure, very hard on everybody, Mark. Just, you know, everybody's world's been rocked a little bit. And, uh, but I always, you know, you think about all the circumstances and other things that could be going on in life. There, there are a lot worse things right now than what we've got to go through. Okay. Coach, uh, we don't know a lot about the long-term health effects of this disease. And I know that student athletes who do test positive will be a part of that cardiac registry, but how concerned are you about the potential that, you know, these students could have lifelong health issues? Well, a couple of thoughts on that. And I've already uh, referenced my science background or lack thereof. Um, you know, one, one interesting article I read uh, months ago was just about, you know, somebody asked, that question as a basketball player actually a really good basketball player asked on behalf of a friend and the answer from the medical expert was you know we don't know uh, to your point because there is no data and we're all you know we're all creatures of data right we can we can tell you how long an acl in, in general terms how long an acl recovery is you know uh name an injury and usually we have an idea of what to expect again in general terms but uh, when there's no data no research and that's a whole new ballgame and that was certainly a part of this equation as I understand it, uh, with the myocarditis and just uh, cardiac issues in general. So, but I'd also uh, volunteer, there's risk in everything we do. And if you look at the percentages and all those kinds of things, you know, and based on listening to really smart people, you know, I don't think it's top of the list, but it's certainly not anything you can minimize or just, you know, take for granted. And I think that's uh, certainly why the uh, MRI component was, was included, cardiac MRI component. Although I, I can share this with you based on, again, you know, not being an expert, uh, it sounds like there's, there's, that's a debatable topic, you know, a very debatable topic. And uh, from what I understand, uh, not a consistent interpretation of that, uh, that, that segment, uh, conference to conference. But, um, you know, I think we've, we've chosen a path that really uh, errs on the side of caution for the players. And that's, that's probably the way it should be, quite frankly. Quinn Douglas. Hey, Coach, from when this all started back on August 11th when the Big Ten announced the cancellation all the way up until Wednesday, rumors seem to be flying day in and day out about possible restart dates for the Big Ten. And I know some of even your players were commenting on it on social media, along with a lot of the other players in the Big Ten. How much of a mental toll did hearing all these rumors about Big Ten starting on October 10th, October 17th, and all these dates that were thrown out how much of a mental toll did that take on your players and maybe even on your staff yeah you, you know the players uh again to me they're they're the prominent you know focal point in this whole discussion um uh, you know and, and you know there's a lot of discourse out there a lot of talk and what have you I mean, it's just commonsensical coaches want to play we want to compete because that's our jobs that's what we do 
Uh, we chose it, most of us chose it for our profession, not many guys end up here by accident. So uh, it goes without saying that we, we wanted to compete. And, and I would say the same thing about college football players. I talk to our guys all the time about, you know, uh, two things, you know, we all choose to do this. And then secondly, we're able to do it. So we can be, feel very uh, fortunate about that. But uh, nobody wanted to play more than the, the players. And nobody was more disappointed on August 11th, I can assure you. The coaches were, you know, everybody in, in, involved with the uh, program was, but uh, no, nobody more so than the players, you know, and it just, uh, uh, again, things can always be worse. You know, it's not a life or death circumstance, but um, it's like when players get hurt, you know, they, they, they see opportunities to compete and play, you know, uh, disappearing in front of them. It was kind of the same, same sensation. So, yeah, everybody's wanted to come back and, and get back uh, since that time. Uh, probably the biggest challenge was, you know, when, in my judgment, August 11th, uh, what I heard was we're not going until January. So I gave our guys a chance to go home. They had been home in two plus months. So good, good for them to have an opportunity to do that. Um, so we, we cut them loose until uh, school came back in session. Uh, so, yeah, if, if uh, had we known we might be playing in October, we probably would have approached that differently. But, you know, that, that wasn't uh, what we had to deal with. So uh, we went made the smartest decision we thought we could based on what was in front of us. Uh, and so, yeah, when I heard October 10th as a possibility, I don't mind telling you, that was a little scary. But if it was, it was. And we, we'd deal with it and make, it, uh, make the best of it. But, um, you know, where we're at right now, we're just going to look at what the time frame is, try to be as smart as we can and do the best we can to get our players ready to play, but also not put them at risk and uh, maybe not, you know, go as hard as we would in an August camp. We're, we're not going to have the flexibility of having all day long available to us. So it's going to be a very different preseason, if you will, that way. But, you know, we, we've got five weeks. We'll have a chance to get the team really ready to go. And if we're concerned about a guy's conditioning or where he's at, we'll, you know, we'll be smart with him like you would any time of the year. Mike O'Brien. Yeah, Coach, obviously, when you had players going in and out of the facility yesterday, <coughs> saw some guys dancing, obviously super excited for obvious reasons. And then it seemed like the entire team converged right around 6 o'clock for a team meeting. I'm just curious. What was it like being part of that meeting? What was maybe some of the things said? Obviously, one of the first positive full team meetings that you guys have had in, you know, six, seven weeks. Uh, almost almost a full meeting. Um, so I told we had three different uh, training groups in the morning, just uh, uh, told those guys individually, but that didn't uh, count for we have some players in quarantine right now. Uh, so, you know, we Zoomed the meeting yesterday, had the whole group in there. Uh, they were, they were really happy to learn the news in the morning and then, you know, equally as happy last night, certainly. So yeah, it's just a whole different, uh, whole different vibe for everybody. Uh, and I, again, it just goes back to the point. I think we all like clarity. We all appreciate that. We all appreciate knowing what the target is. Uh, not that we're not worried about it. Not that we don't realize that we're uh, under a tight timeline right now, but you know, it's, it's just good to know where you're going, certainly, you know, and have direction and have uh, something to aim at. So the players are in a whole different mindset right now. And again, I, uh, I'm kind of banking on that to help us even be more vigilant, you know, in our personal lives as we uh, leave the building. I've, I've uh, thought throughout this whole time, probably the safest place. And it's really this way all, all year long. The safest place for the guys is in the building. And once they leave, you know, the choices they make, the decisions they make are really going to impact, uh, you know, how things work out for them. So, you know, I think this just, uh, you know, everybody right now has got their focus back where it really needs to be. Rob Howe. Coach, have you guys made a decision on the national anthem? Um, you know, what you guys are planning on doing for that? And then second question would be, um, in light of what uh, was found this summer with the racial bias, uh, what type of training, if anything, has, has the coaching staff done? And how have you addressed that since that happened, just to kind of move forward? Yeah, so on the first question, um, you know, um, we've had two, two meetings. I think I've shared that before. We had two very, uh, I think, really good, good meetings, uh, very lively discussion. And we didn't finalize anything, but we, uh, you know, left it, I think, in a good place. And uh, obviously, that's been tabled. It looked like we weren't playing until January, so it really hasn't been a primary uh, object of, of focus or concentration. Well, plenty of time to revisit that now, uh, you know, as we move forward here in the next five weeks. And then, uh, you know, I think we've made a lot of changes on the program, uh, you know, and there's been changes in our athletic department as well, with Broderick shifting into the uh, 
uh, DEI role, you know, full time now. So, and we've had ongoing talks. So we've got some things scheduled for our staff. Uh, but I, th I really think the most instructive and, and meaningful uh, uh, changes and impact came through discussion with our players uh, as a full team and then also uh, in groups and then certainly with the leadership group. So I think, you know, we've made a lot of tweaks and adjustments to our policies. Um, you know, I think, uh, I think I used the term yesterday, softening the edges a little bit, uh, but keeping our core principles uh, right where they should be. So, um, and all, all I can share with you, I've interviewed our seniors over the, I started that process this uh, Monday um, and the feedback's been very good, but really the proof will be when the rubber hits the road. And uh, now that we're in a work mode, and we're gonna be together more um, and, and, you know, working on a daily basis. Uh, you know, what I would say is let's come back and grade this thing in a couple months and see how we're doing. But, you know, so far, so good. Thank you. Tom Kaker. Hey, Kirk, um, twofold question for you. Uh, normally, August, you have a pretty captive audience when you're doing camp. Uh, that's what your focus is. That's what everybody's doing every day. Um, what's the unique challenge with doing it while you while the guys are going to school or have classwork to do? And uh, second part, um, do you have it too deep for us yet? And if you do, can you share it? You, you probably know it better than I do, quite frankly. <laughs> you know, and to that point, like normally I'll, when I'm taking notes, I'll write guys' numbers down instead of names. Uh, and I'm not sure I know all the numbers right now. You know, it's been so long. Uh, it's kind of weird. But yeah, to your point with the uh, camp, you know, it is what it is. And again, I think the one good thing is everybody's fighting the same battles. Uh, and I, I would just kind of, you know, lump that in with, I think the challenge, uh, first and foremost, I think the most important challenge any of us have right now is our personal responsibility, whether it's masking, social distancing, hygiene, uh, not only your hands, but where you live, all those kinds of things. And for college students, that's an issue. Uh, you know, your, your social choices, you know, how social do you want to be? And then I would just lump this in. This is going to be a challenge in terms of getting ready because typically, yeah, we do have a, you know, at least a three week period there where it's a really uh, football only type environment. That's one of the great things about preseason, but uh, that's one more chapter in this whole book. Nothing's been normal since March. And, uh, you know, so really gets down to who can handle that, that challenge the best too, who can, you know, balance their classwork and their academic, uh, yeah. And that hasn't been normal either. A lot of the stuff's online. So how can you handle all these different uh, challenges that, that are very different than any year any of us have been through? So, you know, we just got to navigate it a day at a time and try to help guys when they have issues. And, you know, it's just it's an opportunity to try to rise above. And that's it's easier said than done. But it's a real opportunity for everybody to try to do that. Scott Dockerman. Yeah, Kirk, regarding some of these, uh, this free year that the NCAA has, I mean, first of all, with that, how does that help you as a program when you have a few grad transfers who haven't really had a chance to, to you know, Coy Cronk hasn't run your inside or outside zone and, and uh, Jack Heflin hasn't really worked in your uh, defense before. And then the opportunities for even a Matt Lorbeck to play this year, which he probably wouldn't have been able to because this year doesn't count. Yeah, you know, that's and, um, you know, there, there's a trade off there. Uh, so they have things to learn. I, I guess I'd liken that a little bit in the NFL when you get a free agent or, you know, a player switches teams, that type of thing. You know, in a lot of ways, a lot of times it's like learning a new language. You know, you may call it door and these guys call it window. So it's just a matter of learning the language, the lingo, and just, you know, making that transfer uh, and breaking old habits of the mental part to, you know, realize, okay, this is the, but football is football. Now, certainly the things we do differently, uh, some better, some worse, whatever, uh, depending on the player involved. But I guess the trade-off is it's uh, coincidentally, we uh, you know, we did a, a seminar two days ago with all of our first-year players, groups of four or five. Uh, it was just about the transition. So we, we Zoomed them and uh, it was sequential. But those guys that you mentioned were involved in that meeting. They're first-year players, right? So they uh, they – big difference between a guy who's played three years of college football between a guy that's been here for three months. Uh, so, you know, that, that is the trade off. Like those guys, they know the game, they know what's required. Uh, they understand, you know, Coy's competed in the big 10 and Jack's going to do just fine. And I think Matt, from what I've seen of Matt, he's going to do just fine too. So uh, it's not going to be as big of a adjustment as it would be for a true freshman, not only even you know, remotely close. So they'll be able to handle that and, you know, we'll see how quickly they come along. 
And, and on a follow up to that, you know, the NCAA allows this year to be a free year eligibility wise for everyone. I mean, what are what's the instructions you've been given about scholarship numbers? I mean, I'm sure you, you can't bring them all back. But it, but for somebody like a Cole Banwart, who's coming off an injury, if he had that sixth year or or even, a you know, a Koi Kronk or somebody like that, that might have that extra year. I mean, that's what is it? What have you you've been told about the numbers scholarship wise? You know, I, I've been my desk that I still haven't read, or it's actually in my uh, my green file. Uh, but it just it, it's interesting, and you know, we've had nothing but time, right? <laughs> but I feel like all of our focus has been on trying to move this ball forward, and thinking about it, and thinking about you know all these different scenarios. So I've got some catching up to do on some things. As strange as that sounds, right? But it just uh, it's been hard to to focus real real intently on that. And quite frankly, that whole thing isn't hard to like. That's gonna somebody's gonna have to help me out on that whole equation because it's it's kind of mind blowing. So uh, my my thought right now is let's get the team ready. Let's play these eight games, and then we'll see where we're at. But we'll have some time to sort that out. Okay. Last question, John. May, may call you for some help on that one if you got. Sounds like you know more than I do. Hey, hey Kirk. Two questions for you, really quick. First off, no fans in the stadium as of right now for Big Ten football. What impact do you foresee that having or having for you guys, one at home and two on the road? Well, you know, on the road, that's great, especially if we're indoors, uh, all for it. So we're in one of those, you know, 100,000 uh, seat stadiums. Uh, at home, you know, I, I thought about that back when they talked about the whole concept. And, you know, I, I just kind of flashed right back to like when we scrimmage in August or scrimmage in the spring without fans there. It, it feels kind of weird because you're, you're going live and you're going full speed and all that, but it's not the same as game day. Um, so, yeah, it's one of those things I've never experienced that we're, we're going to find out here shortly. But it's because, yeah. you know, normally you come out of the tunnel, that adrenaline rush of, uh, of the fans, you know, anticipating the swarm or all those things that you're accustomed to. Uh, so it's going to be very, very different and probably be a little bit of an adjustment for all of us. And then part two of that, that first home game, what's the emotion going to be like for that first quarter break, for that wave, getting to be back on the field? What's that emotion going to be like for you? You know, that, that'll really be special, I'm sure. And that, that's one thing that won't change. You know, we, we have not lost that ability or capability. And, uh, you know, it's kind of one of the untold stories of this whole whole thing. The risk of not having the season was uh, or playing indoors like we thought about in January and in, in the wintertime. Uh, you know, the kids weren't going to have that opportunity at least to uh, have something to look forward to. And I think that's probably the biggest part about it for them. It gives them something all week to look forward to. You hear the stories from their families and, and the kids that are involved. Um, so it's really been a, a neat thing. And I'll, I'll segue a little bit. One of the cooler things, the stories I've heard about that whole thing came from all people. Tom Moore, who was on the sideline. I did see him with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers the other day, working the sidelines down there at 80, 81 years old. Uh, but when Tom was back there to be honorary captain a year ago for uh, the Wisconsin game, uh, he was over at the hospital, I think at 8, 8 30, 9 o'clock that morning. And, and he was just so looking forward to that. And here's a football guy, a lifelong football guy, lifelong Iowa guy. Uh, but that was, I think, as special to him going up there and, and getting to, you know, see, see what that was all about. I think it was as special as him being honored uh, as the honorary captain. Uh, and he told me all about it and told me about the, the kids getting tickets and had concessions for them up there, popcorn, all that stuff. So I, I don't know. I'm sure they're going to have to social distance and all that, but hopefully this tradition can continue uh, and make it, you know, it won't make, be 100% the same for them, but hopefully it'll be something they can participate in and really enjoy. And I, I know we'll look forward to that. Okay. Thanks for your time, coach. Thanks, everyone.